Hola, hola, muy buenas, mi nombre es Alejandro Jiménez y os traigo aquí una nueva entrevista con talento del Pro Wrestling nivel mundial. Mi última mitad es la luchadora Chris Wolf, original de Chicago con solo 33 años. Chris se ha hecho un nombre en el mundo de la lucha libre femenina gracias a su trabajo los últimos cuatro años y medio en la promoción por excelencia del Yoshi en Japón en Stardom, donde ha llegado a ser campeona High Speed. Ahora recientemente ha abandonado el país, la tierra del sol naciente, y ha empezado una aventura como freelance, como luchadora por su cuenta, está viajando por Europa, por Estados Unidos, y la semana pasada hizo una parada muy especial aquí en mi tierra. En Barcelona estuvo luchando para RCW, Revolution Champions y Wrestling, Tuvo un combate intergénero, el primero de su carrera, contra el portugués Mauro Chávez. Pero acción en el ring aparte, tuvimos la oportunidad de sentarnos con Chris y de hablar con ella. Una entrevista de la que estoy muy satisfecho, una entrevista en la que hablamos sobre wrestling, sí, hablamos sobre Stardom. Pero sobre todo hablamos de los orígenes de Chris, qué significa para ella el wrestling, qué significa para ella el hecho de no haber podido encajar nunca en la sociedad. ¿Qué significa para ella el, el éxito, el fracaso? Y me parece que es una conversación muy interesante. Acompañados en este vídeo aquí en la caja de comentarios, tenéis el enlace a la entrevista perfil que le he hecho, un enfoque diferente. Pero como sé que os gusta escuchar las conversaciones enteras, sé que os gusta sobre todo escuchar a Chris Wolf, una persona tan alegre y con tantas, tantas ganas de vivir. Pues os dejo aquí la entrevista completa, el audio. Perdón por la calidad. No era el mejor sonido ambiente, pero creo que se puede apreciar mucho el buen ruido, las buenas vibras que transmite Creek Wolf. Así que nada, espero que disfrutéis en inglés. Eso sí, habla muy bien, así que no creo que tengáis problemas. So, here we go. I will let you with Chris Wolf. start with the beginning okay so what are some of your first memories in, in wrestling um actually it's probably about four years ago i saw wait no 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 four years ago i first saw women's pro wrestling okay. in japan yes on youtube but i have a little bit of memories of hulk hogan and rick flair when i was a really little kid but my mother was very strict so she didn't let me watch tv so i knew about like Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock because of my friends. Because of the kids in high school, then I, I understood, but I never really saw it. It wasn't until I was in Japan looking for a reason in life that I stumbled across a YouTube page that had um, Japanese pro wrestling. And through a friend's recommendation, I found a specific group, Stardom, and contacted them and started training with them and then debuted as a wrestler in Japan. So it's a little strange because every wrestler I've talked with, they say that they like wrestling since <laughs> they were very little, so yeah. why weren't you a, a fan of wrestling? Just because you didn't show it or because you, yeah. you didn't... I didn't you didn't know about it. I didn't eye. see it. You know, visibility is a very big yes. thing. Um, the fact that it was on national television, you know, and I didn't see it, it's really weird, yeah, right? Yeah. Everyone knew about wrestling. I did not. Everyone knew about TV shows. I did not. I was a really weird kid. You know, I liked to read and I liked to play on my computer a lot. And I was a big nerd. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I I didn't quite fit in in general. So would you say that when your first memory is watching wrestling is women wrestling? It's yeah, yeah that's true. And I think that's the thing. I noticed. A little bit of the women's pro wrestling, you know, there's these beautiful, strong, like Spartan looking women, you know, and they're so tall and they, they're like curvy and beautiful, but like, I, um, I can't relate. I'm a small Asian girl, tiny body, I, you know, I fight against the stereotype of Asian girls being weak. Because I hate that. I, I hate the stereotype of anyone assuming that just because you're little, you're weak. But when I saw Japanese women's pro wrestling, other women of my size kicking ass, I was like, maybe I can do this too. Is this a job? What? So I think 
visibility of many different types of women is so important in this industry, in every industry, to be honest. Yeah. So, well, what is the, the exact moment you said, I want to be a wrestler, I want to do this? Fuck, I mean, I think it was... So if, if there is war, if, the, if, if there is the war, moment? Yes. So, like, after emailing uh, Stardom and trying to ask them, how do you become a pro wrestler? They said, first, come to a show. Yes. See it live and decide from there. And I can't remember who, like, the match card was exactly, mm -hmm. but I specifically remember two wrestlers. I remember everyone, yes. but the two that stood out in my mind were Kaede Hojo and Akshi Asakawa. And they, like, they moved something inside of me. You know, I didn't understand how Kaede could keep living after taking so much abuse. But she kept fighting, and I thought, like, I was at the edge of my seat, like, fight, 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 keep going, keep going, you know? Like, you want them to survive. And then with Act, she's so bigger than life. Her character, her charisma, her personality, like, I admire her so much. And she never, she's like Heidi in the sense that she never gives up. You know, um, I, that's what moved me. Not only relating to their appearance, you know, that only goes so deep, but to their persistence, to their aura, their energy, um, that's what moved me. <laughs> and why did you decide to leave uh, uh, Chicago and go to, to Japan? To, to so, um, so did you did you went to Japan only exclusively to, to wrestle or did no. you move to Japan and then? Uh, no yeah, it's the latter. Oh. I. Um, I was actually working as a photographer in San Francisco for a couple of years mm -hmm. and me and my fiance broke up and I was in a really bad place. I didn't know what to do because we were going to get married and my friend in Japan was teaching and he was like, come, take a break, figure things out, just relax. And so I came to Japan, I sold my photo equipment, I went probably two weeks after talking to him. I was just like, okay, fuck this, bye. Um, and I cried for a bit, but then I decided I'm gonna rent a bicycle and a tent and cycle from Niigata, north of Japan, to uh, Hiroshima, which I think is 900 kilometers, something like that. I think uh, it took about 20 something days of riding through the mountains of Japan in fall and then winter because I am a very bad planner. Um, and I decided, I, after making it, after hallucinating and wanting to quit, but continuing because I got obsessed with the idea of succeeding. When I made it, I was like, fuck it. I don't want to go back. I'm going to stay in Japan. And so I became a teacher. Because <laughs> that's the best way to get a visa. It's the simplest way. Really? Uh, if you're an, if you're a native English speaker, you can get a job fairly easily um, because there's so much desire to learn the language. But I realized that wasn't my calling. I had fun because I'll have fun in a box. I I can do anything and have fun, but but there was still something missing. So yeah, I um I think I think that's where I started looking for something more physically challenging. So that's how I came towards pro wrestling. <laughs> uh, and was it hard to be in uh, stardom? Because the Japanese promotion have this, this uh, people say that it's very hard, the dojo, training yeah. there, uh, yeah. the difference in the culture between the United States and Japan, yeah. the language barrier. How, how was that? Yeah. Was it really hard for you, mm. being such a very happy person to be there and yeah. be so... So strict? Yes. Yeah, it was. I mean, when I first started, it was very old school. Um, there's lots of, like, Japanese hierarchy is very strict. You're not supposed to talk unless spoken to. It's kind of militant. Um, and a lot of times I would feel really anxious because there's also the language barrier. I couldn't quite understand sometimes, like, the technique. I would just copy, watch and copy. And if I didn't get it right or it wasn't perfect, they would punish you. You know, punch you, kick you, make you do it again. And the, oh wait, surprise, you still don't understand? You still don't know it? Do it again, do it again. So it's like, it was very physically taxing, but also mentally, like, you're not used to, well, I'm not, maybe I'm such a baby, and I didn't know anything about wrestling, but maybe I 
wasn't used to people just disliking me because I was new. <laughs> but that's just the system that exists. And so it's, it's one of the things you just go through and you keep going until you reach a point where they leave you alone. <laughs> and did quitting wrestling came to your mind when you were there in the dojo? Which... Mm, all the time, yeah. It, all the time because it's always like, I think it's natural for people to want to do the easier path. Because it's like, okay, well, I have education, I have skills, why don't I do this? And it's like, well, I had the chance and I was doing it, I was happy, but there was still something that was missing. Why am I trying to run away from this? Okay, let me, let me give it everything. Let me keep trying, even though I feel weak. Even though I don't feel good enough most of the time. And, um, you know, it's, it's so hard because they're so good like they're younger they're naturally talented i i'm okay but I, i even now i i don't know if i can ever reach that level but i um part of the fun is kind of just to keep trying <laughs> masochists <laughs> And what do you think about the, the wrestling culture in, in Japan? Because in Japan there is no uh, mixed companies. It's women's wrestling, it's huh. men's wrestling, it's yeah. separate. Uh, do you think this is better, it's worse for women? Uh, what do you think about that? You know, like I realized that with women's wrestling abroad in Western countries, it's been piggybacked on to men's wrestling. So it's kind of secondary, but they get exposure. So they're seen more, but they're seen more in a very small light. They're only seen as uh, accessories. But that's changing, you know, with things like the Mae Young. Uh, and indie scene has been really pushing for women to be seen more and more women's shows, more, um, what's it called, intergender matches. The people are really trying to make women equal. Um, so I think while the starts have been different, Oh yeah, sorry, the Japanese has always been separate, so like, women's was always developed as its own separate sport. The storyline is their own, they're not someone's girlfriend or like, you know, property, it's, they keep going. So while they started in different places, I think they're going to meet at the same, where these women are athletes, and that's the story. <laughs> so now you are, we could say you are working as a freelance, have you lived uh, Stardom? Stardom? Well, I can't really be there if I'm not living there, so I'm not really full. I'm not full time. I am a freelance wrestler now, and it is so terrifying and exciting because I'm so used to just getting a message. Okay, practice. We're gonna meet here. We're gonna have a show here. Get on the bus. Come at this time. And now it's like I have to talk to promoters. I have to see what each company is like. Everyone's different. Even the fans are different. I'm used to seeing the same people every week. You know. And here it's like new faces all the time, which is so, again, scary, but I love it. I love people. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. And do you think that you can succeed being a woman in wrestling, being a freelance? I mean, people say that you, have, you can have a long career working in Stardom in Japan or maybe in WWE in the United States, but huh. can you earn a life? being a freelance wrestler, being a woman. Mm. Can I? Working, I don't know. Working in Europe, is it difficult? Do you think it's so much difficult than being a man? I'm not sure, because I'm, I'm very sure men struggle as well. You know, to stand out as a man is also very hard. To stand out as a woman, I think to stand out as a wrestler enough that people want to support you is a very difficult task, because this is a, like any performer or creator knows, it's so hard to make ends meet. How do you how do you inspire people to support you? Because like what is, what what is it? You know, it's easier with a regular job because it's like go here for this time, get paid for this amount of time. When you create, when you perform, when you put your body out there, who is the judge of what you're worth except for you? I am trying. I think I'm about a month or two into this freelance life. So, I'll let you know. <laughs> Great. Hope you see, we can see you here. I hope so. Yes. And talking about the, the difference or non-difference between, uh, this myth about uh, 
men and women in wrestling. Mm. Uh, working in the bandits, how do you see a, a difference in uh, promoters talking with men, with women? Is there any kind of difference between, especially in promotion that not like this, that is just a, a women's show, but show with both uh, men and women? Mm. Is there a difference between the, the treatment between the promoter and the wrestler that being a woman or a man? Well, in my personal experience, I think the difference is more of like who's familiar with the promoter like if they've met several times and they're more closer uh, I haven't noticed any difference with respect or anything like that I, I've heard stories of course I think perhaps my experience might be a little different too because I am like a 12 year old boy so people don't bother me which is great because I know that some women who are like who are more I guess you know, sexy, you're beautiful, yes. they get attention that maybe they don't, you know, want, or if they know how to handle it, then that's cool, but it's it's really difficult, I think. Uh, every human's life, I think, is pretty difficult, but it's, that's, a, that's the sort of thing that I don't quite know how to handle. Like, if someone says something uncomfortable to me, I don't really know, I just don't like it. I might just go away. <laughs> like, ah! Leave me alone, you know. Because how, how do you feel if you are wrestling, having a match, and something, someone in the crowd just uh, talk with you because he thinks that you are sexy, and not because the the work you do in the ring, like the men? Well, you know, I don't know. Like there should be a fine line, right? Because humans like pretty things. Yes. And so I think it's natural to be drawn to someone that you're attracted to. But you're not paying to see a beautiful woman, you're paying uh, to see a wrestling show. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe not. I mean, I mean, there's like a mix of fans, right? There's yes. people that enjoy wrestling and there's people that just enjoy ladies wrestling. You're gonna get guys who just see women in a sexual light? I don't know if that can change. I, I think it would be nice because ultimately we just, we would just want to be seen as people. Yeah. You know, and because this concept of women's wrestling and men's wrestling, mm. I don't know if you think like me, it's just wrestling, you say, no? Yeah. Because one women's match should be a great match, not a great women's match. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's lots of like tricky words. Um, it, like, I, I understand the differences because the way we move is different. Yes. The way we perform the moves is different. Like, being someone smaller, I have to be bigger. I have to try harder to like, Argh! but it's so hard because I'm so small. Um, but I, I get it. We want to be seen as good, and I think, um, I think we're getting there. I don't really know. Like I've been so separated from like men's wrestling for years. I watch it um, when I started training, and then when I was uh, wrestling in Japan, but. Um, I, I honestly feel like there's still a lot that I don't know. Yeah. And I'm working on that. I'm sorry, I'm dumb! <laughs> and in any company that you've worked this month as a freelance, have you felt that uh, they, maybe in a car with just uh, women, uh, men's matches, do you feel like maybe some promoters see the women's match just like, like a peace break? I mean, just like... Uh, maybe, yeah. Probably. Did you feel like that? I don't want you to mention the name uh, no, of the no, company. No, no. Or I, don't I mean, like, I get it. Um, Do you feel comfortable knowing, knowing that you are just the lady in the peace break match? I think, um, I think they, if there's a promotion that only has like one or two ladies matches, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe they do view women's pro wrestling as that, like a like a peaceful gesture, which is, I think that's okay. Because it gives us a chance to be like, hey, you want more. You know, I I don't know. I think um, a lot of it has to be seen. You know, we don't get to see these things normally. But once we do, it's like, okay, then I can be a fan of this. You know, a lot of people don't get a chance to see women's for wrestling. And if their chance is, like, like you said, you know, there are people who specifically want women's for wrestling. They'll go to a women's for wrestling show. But if there's like a women's match or two on a like a reg like a wrestling show for whatever promotion, maybe they'll get a crowd that would never have sought it out. They'll be like, oh shit, that's actually really awesome. Oh, I like that girl. She's really good, you know. So fuck it. You know, just take whatever you're given and make it a thousand times better.
That's a really good advantage for everything in life. Yeah, right? Because you don't have shit and the world doesn't owe you anything. When we talk about women, women wrestling, we have like two different types of, of shows. We have the one that likes just, just women's matches, just uh -huh. men's matches, and there's some type of intergender matches, uh -huh. mixed matches. What do you think about these intergender matches, like the one you have yeah. tonight? Uh, do you prefer to prefer just like women? Do you, do you think it's better to, to do it with men? I, I honestly, I was excited to have this match because I'm not sure. Like, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the differences are just yet. I think psychologically, the differences are there, you know, like, when, it, there's a lot of, like, undertones that maybe make people feel uncomfortable with intergender matches, um, and I understand why, uh, be, but, like, the story is really fascinating to, to push into, like, what if they were to fight, and it becomes more of, like, the reality that maybe not every fight is based on strength, or even skill, there's like chances, determination, like will, you know, I think the story that can come from an intergender match is just as good as one with like women and women, men and men, um, it's, I think that that's what's important, yes. not whether it's a man or woman, yes, that's my point, I'm sorry, I talk a lot. <laughs> no, 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 I like that, you talk a lot, <laughs> And now that you've left Japan, you are working in the, 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 the real world, no? Because Japan is like a, another planet. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. very separate. You are working in Europe, you are working in the United States. Uh, how do you see your, your career going? How, how would you like to do? Where do you, uh, would you yeah. like to work? Do you have a, a goal right now in your career? <laughs> how, how do you see it? I know, yes, it's talking yeah. about goals. I mean, a little, a little dreamy, but um, no. how is your career going? I think do you think it will be more difficult for you to earn a spot in wrestling being a woman, or do you think that it doesn't mind right now? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> so like this is the thing, right? Yes. I, I didn't join wrestling to become a wrestler, which might make people upset, right? I joined wrestling because I saw the cool things that wrestlers could do. So like, it's the whole thing where like, are you your job? I'm not great enough, I think, or have the mentality to be a star the way, or like the, like I, I have the weird dedication and passion to keep going, but as for something to like, I'm gonna be number one. I, I don't, I don't have that because I'm still just trying to learn what my place is, but I think in general I'm a very displaced person. I never really belong, so for me, my goals in wrestling, I would like to see if I could financially survive. Can this be a job that I rely on? Because it's fun as fuck, but there's, there's a cost, you know? There's a cost of your body, there's the cost of time, you know, the instability is one of the things that any creator or performer has to go through. Um, I just want to be happy. <laughs> That's my goal. I want to be happy. And I am. So good job, Chris. You're doing okay, I think. Okay. And um, for newer fans, how, how would you describe your in real style? Your character? Because you, you talk about your inspiration in Japan, and I see a lot of that when you are talking in your real style. This, this character and more life will show now. Yay. I'm glad. Um, definitely, I've been influenced by uh, Kaede and Acts for sure. I mean, I love Natsuki Tayo, who's like a speed king in uh, Japan, or was, she's retired now. But um, I think I do like running around and kicking people in the face. Uh, I like talking to the audience, and I think my character is fun because it's, it is me. It's like, I'm going to see what is a good human. I'm not really sure, but like, so for me, it's like, what is good? I'm going to do these terrible things, but is it bad? <laughs> do you see yourself succeeding in WWE or isn't WWE? Because more people 
like it was lovely because that's what they saw when they were children. But in your case, you didn't see, you didn't see that. So, uh, so you're right. You know, like what I saw was stardom, and that was the one I wanted to join, and I did. And you found already being even a champion in stardom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was that was so fun. <laughs> um, I, I think that's the thing, right? Like my goals have always been very short term because I, of that style of living. I think I've mentioned it before in other uh, interviews. Like at 16, I didn't think I didn't think I was gonna make it to 16. I made it to 16. I didn't think I was gonna make it to 21. Made it to 21. Then I thought, you know, 28 is a pretty good age to die. You do a lot of them. Like I was 28, and it's like, oh my God, I'm not done yet. What do I want to do? And I'm still at that feeling where, like, I I still want to do things. Um, so, as far as it goes with goals, all of them are short term. <laughs> it's like, okay, I want to pay this bill. I want to live here. I want to experience this. Okay, what's next? Um, I'm gonna try to extend my view and like yes. see the future more. But that's not how I function. I think. Which is so horrible because I feel like I'm not living life right sometimes. Why? Because people plan and they follow through but, and they reach the goal. But because everybody does something, does it mean that is the correct way to do it? No, I guess not. I think my life is very interesting because I've I've been able to pivot and change and grow in these different ways. I think my challenge is how to succeed. And what is the definition of to success? Succeed, yes. Yeah. Because if you can pay your bills and you're happy with your work, yeah, yeah. Are you are you a failure? I I don't think so. Oh, I guess so. You know, like I have so much joy, but there was a time when like I couldn't pay my bills, and that affected a lot of things in my life, obviously. So it's like, what am I doing wrong? Um, so. There has to be a balance, and I think every single person is wondering what that is, because you know you work so hard every day for what? Yes. And if you don't find satisfaction in your work, where do you find it? And my kung fu teacher always said, you either do something you love, or do something that allows you to do what you love. And if you don't know what it is you love, that's so hard. You're searching. I think everyone's just searching for shit. So, but what is success? Yes. Just because you have a nice house doesn't mean you have success. Maybe you have safety. I don't know. There's always something, I guess. Anyways, <laughs> life. Life difficult. Oh. So if we talk just in short-term things, where where are you going to work? Wherever they let me explore myself. Um, WWE is really really cool, but I can only be myself because I joined wrestling to be me. Yeah. To right, like I joined because I thought, holy shit, I can do these ridiculous things and be myself and, and be paid and people, for it. And people like it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if there's a place for me in WWE as myself, then cool. If it's as someone else, they can get someone else. I think that would work for them better if they just need a role to fill. But if they want me. Then yeah, but I'm like a weird ass motherfucker, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know who wants me. <laughs> and and, that's and now, now you say that you are a, a weird person. Uh, why do you think that uh, these weird people like wrestling and finding wrestling like a home and something like? That? Because I've talked with a lot of wrestlers and they said like, oh yeah, weird person and the wrestling really is my thing. Why do you think that? For your case, do you feel comfortable being a, a weird person and in wrestling? I mean, I've always been weird, <laughs> so so I'm pretty comfortable with it. I think um, there. But, but do you think you are weird, or people say that you are weird? No, I think I'm weird. <laughs> I feel weird. I feel like sometimes I don't process things the same way. I wonder how reactions are like. What's a normal reaction to a problem? Yes. Can I tell you a story? It's yeah, kind of, of a course, bad story. Yes, yes. All right. So, like, I'm more calm now, but before I had like no control over my reactions. I'm 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 better now. But there's this one time when I was dorming in uh, San Francisco. I was, I was living in San Francisco, but I was going. I was taking classes, whatever. So I was dorming, and I go into my room after semester break. And I look at the bed, and my stuff is all on the floor, and someone else's sheets are on the bed. I am so mad because also my swords are missing, my all my weapons are gone. I'm like, what the fuck? 
And I am with my friend, and I take off my pants, and I rub my ass on the pillow, because I'm so mad. And then I put it back up, and my friend is just like, what the fuck did you just do? And I was like, I'm going to find the RA. And so the resident advisor was just like, um, sorry, we made a mistake. Uh, we're going to tell her to go to a different room. And I was like, oh, shit. And then I actually met the girl, and she was such a nice person. A month later, I told her, like, I'm really sorry, but I wiped my ass on your pillow because I was mad at you for taking my shit off. And she was like, the advisor told me to do it, but I guess it's okay because I didn't get pink eye. And I'm like, oh, thank you for still being my friend. So, I mean, it's, it's shit like that where I feel like, um, what is a normal reaction? Yes. When people are sad, they cry. I like smile cry. I laugh and I cry. I don't have a full control over how I feel. Like I always, like if I feel mad, I feel it for like a second. Then I feel really sad that I got angry. I feel really sad for myself. I feel sad for that person or like the situation. And like everything's so intense. I always feel like emotionally intense. Sometimes I cry when I see people that I've met in Japan mm -hmm. because I've missed them so hard, you know? And it's because they, I don't think people realize how much they affect me, yes. you know? Like, just their friendship, just, like, short times being accepted with them meant a lot when I was in Japan because I was so alone. You know, like the Japanese girls are kind, but there's always going to be a distance. Yes. Um, with some of them, I got close for sure, but there was a really long time when I just was alone. And it wasn't until ACT came and Oed Otai came that I had this community with uh, the foreign wrestlers and I felt like I belonged somewhere. I think that's one of the things that makes life hard. So we all look for things to belong to. Kind of, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And what do you think that the, the, <clears throat> the maybe, we call the wrestling family, have accepted you? A, a weird person? Why, why do you feel comfortable? <laughs> that, that was the, the original question. Oh, before. yeah, oh, uh, sorry. We were, no, no, no. You're I, right, because uh, they're also My weird. fault, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're also weird as fuck. I mean, here we, we dress up as superheroes and beat the shit out of each other. You know, we do it in many different ways. We tell stories with our bodies. We're exploring... We're all weird, you know. We we can't explore the same way that other people do. Okay, and just one more question. Just because I'm a big Ring of Honor fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How was working in the Messenger World Weekend last year with Ring of Honor? It was amazing. You know, they have so much production. They have all these big lights. The crowd is so hot. The arenas are so big. I think. You know, the, some of the Western productions that I've been to, I think that's the biggest one. And it's really impressive. And then to see all of the wrestlers performing at such a high level. You know, I had seen some old videos before when they're in, like, smaller venues. Yes. Right? Like that, like, the green mat yes. and, like, a basketball yes. hoop somewhere. Yes. And then to see them in, like, such a giant auditorium, you know, it was impressive to see how it grows. And each company grows yes. and evolves. I think that's the really fascinating thing. It, And it always depends on the people that are in it. Um, same thing for Stardom. It'll be the same thing for RCW, just the longer that we go. You know, we'll, we'll see. I, I have no idea. I'm just saying, like, nothing is static. Nothing stays the same. That's all I know. So, with, uh, with that being said, will women wrestling in the United States be a big thing so in the near future? Yeah, I mean, like, define big thing. Like, mainstream is something hard, you know? Yes. Even wrestling now isn't really mainstream. Yes. So, But inside the wrestling bubble? Yes. Inside the, I think so. Absolutely. No, I think there's definitely a place for it. I think a lot of people are watching because everyone wants something new and exciting. And it's a whole population of people that hasn't been looked at, you know? And there's people of different different backgrounds um, and different stories and different physiques you know yes. it's it's so different and I think that's what we want we want stimulation and excitement.